Ladies and gentlemen, what the GPU market needs right now are cheaper graphics cards, particularly when it comes to the low to mid-range offerings. Sure, NVIDIA are slowly releasing new RTX 40 cards, like we'll see the RTX 4060 Ti launch by the end of this month, but still, it's probably going to be 400 US dollars or more. So cheaper cards, like 300 bucks, are definitely going to be appreciated by the market. And the great news is AMD almost certainly will be providing us that with new RDNA 3 cards, as the company have officially offered us a statement concerning their release time frame so we're going to be talking about that plus some other things in this very video that's right after this message from the video's sponsor if you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. First of all, I want to start out with a very intriguing list of graphics cards which was leaked quote unquote on the internet via a Rock M contribution. Now, this actually offers several un un uh, unannounced and unreleased SKUs, such as the RX 7950 XTX, XT, the 7800 XT, the 7700 XT, and so on, and so on, and so on. Um, but I have to tell you guys, I don't actually think this is legitimate. I'm throwing it in here because it's been spreading around the internet over the past, uh, well, let's say several hours or so, but I don't believe that this is actually an official thing from AMD. So a source actually reached out to me and told me that the GitHub pull request was fake with the RX 7000 series GPUs. Then slightly after that, the good Hunter on Twitter also pointed out that the pull request was made by a non-AMD person and additionally the 7700 XT is using GFX 1102 I have to say I didn't actually spot that I guess my eyes just glazed over it so kudos for them for actually noticing so yeah I do believe that this is not a legitimate set of graphics cards leaks for those who are uninitiated the 7950 XTX I've actually spoken about previously it basically was RDNA 3 refresh based on N31 so the number of compute units that type of thing were essentially identical it may have had the uh, SALU, S-A-L-U changes for RDNA 4 because it could be based on RDNA 3 plus with the refresh but I was getting very mixed signals on that but basically speaking it would be running at higher clock frequencies and potentially in the case of the XTX variant it would also have Vcash but to my understanding it was cancelled so I do think that this Rock M contribution has been nuked um, Google Cache currently is returning no data whatsoever, but this has been basically saved by a Redditor. As always, this could be legitimate, it could certainly be true, however, so far I think that this is fake. So I'm just letting you guys know this because, well, I think it is important to say if I think something's uh, just not true. But what is quite exciting is AMD have made an official statement concerning the RX 7000 series. As pretty much everyone knows, the 7900 XTX and XT have been released and they are based on N31. But while NVIDIA have started to release cards like the 4070 and we're expecting the 4060 Ti by the end of this month, and of course other cards like the 4060 will follow it, AMD just haven't really done that. So we definitely need... Uh, N33 and N32 based offerings. But Lisa Su states as follows, in gaming graphics, channel sell-through of the RX 6 and 7000 series has increased. We saw strong sales of a high-end 7900 XTX in this quarter, in the first quarter, excuse me, and we're on track to expand our RDNA 3 GPU portfolio with launch of new mainstream uh, RX 7000 series GPUs this quarter quarter now to my understanding the rx 7600 will launch roughly 
um, at the same time frame as the RTX 4060 Ti. However, the performance targets are quite different. So the RX 7600 and the pricing, uh, sorry, the naming for this has been really up in the air. Some people are calling it 7600 XT, some are calling it the 7600. I'm honestly unsure which one it is, but I have basically been told that this card will launch by the end of the month. And as for the price, this is actually where things are seemingly pretty good. Um, it seems like the 7600 uh, is probably going to cost around 300 US dollars. Now, some sources have actually initially told me more than that, more like 330, 350 bucks. However, the updates that I've been hearing actually put it at much more aggressive pricing, somewhere in the neighborhood, as I said, of around 300 US dollars. And the performance for this card, well, it's not going to be, as you would expect, exactly super duper high end. The last I heard, and this is with work in progress drivers, and this is a couple of months ago, so definitely things could change. But last I heard, we're probably looking at this card being roughly on par with something like the 6700 XT, but obviously the memory config is a little different again um take that with a grain of salt because those drivers were work in progress and i do not know which game was being tested so things almost certainly could have changed since then it's going to be very interesting honestly to see how the market responds to this these cards do only have eight gigabytes of ram but of course they are also going to be relatively cheap hopefully so perhaps there will be a little more tolerance there i also just want to briefly mention another card that i have spoken about previously and this is actually well honestly the name has been going for a couple of different revisions again amd have been kind of weird when it comes to names i've called it previously on the channel the 7800 xtx but it also could end up being called the 7900 xt the TLDR about this, and again, I've spoken about this at length before, is it's got 70 compute units, 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's basically the same card as the Radeon Pro version. Uh, the only difference is slight changes in the memory configuration. It would roughly compete with the 4070 Ti. The thing is, I'm hearing that this card could launch June or July. Um, but it seems very conflicting whether AMD will actually end up launching this or not. Some people are telling me that it's a shoo-in and it will almost certainly launch, and others are essentially telling me that it probably won't ever see the light of day unless the Radeon Pro cards just don't sell too well. So I don't really know um, whether this is actually legitimate or not. I'm just again mentioning it in this video because I don't want to make an, you know, a just a whole video on this topic alone because it's just simply not worth it so i am just throwing it in here for completeness sake because i did have that small update with the source telling me it could launch in june or july i would not hold my breath on this as i said the performance is roughly equivalent to the rtx 4070 ti but when it comes to the 7800 xt which is based on n31 that's uh, right n32 excuse me uh, we're looking at 60 compute units, and that's going to be probably close to something like a 6950 uh, XT. So it's not that much slower than the 7800 XTX, which is another reason that I'm not that convinced it's ever going to see the light of day. Also, I want to give you guys a very quick update again to the 4060 Ti, because now we actually have a palette which have basically done an oopsie and essentially leaked the fact that yes, these cards will have 80 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory on 128-bit bus. There is absolutely no new information here. It is exactly what we've been saying for the last several months. There is no new info at all. It's just basically official confirmation to the memory configuration. Um, it's quite difficult to do a direct comparison against the previous generation's memory configurations because obviously Lovelace does have a different cache structure. Um, so I wouldn't exactly say that it's 100% assured that it's going to be memory bandwidth starved. I'm actually more concerned at the moment of the actual total amount of RAM. Again, this is going to be roughly on par with the 3070, possibly a little bit faster. And obviously that means that in theory anyway, if this card had enough VRAM, you could probably run like a 3070 slash 3070 Ti. It's no slouch. It's not slow. Um, and you would probably want to run most games at like 1440p with most settings uh, pretty much cranked. The only problem is, of course, this could run into some uh, limitations when it comes to, well, 
our friend and buddy VRAM, um, simply because, of course, textures and everything else, the assets at the moment are just becoming, well, <laughs> let's just say kind of big. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this card performs. Um, at around 400 US dollars, it's not terrible. Uh, that's if, of course, they do end up hitting that price point. And knowing NVIDIA, I don't necessarily have 100% faith in that. But it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with these cards when they launch. Um, in terms of how reviewers find them, I'm going to be also extremely interested to see how the used market gets affected with their launch. With that said, guys, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. It's just a quick one today. Um, but with that said, thanks very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Bye for now.